So this video is about an app on iOS called Workflow that I really love and, and have spent some time with over the summer tinkering with, um, trying to figure out new uses for it. Um, basically what Workflow is, it is an app that allows you to create uh, a list of instructions on your phone. And then when you run this workflow that you can create separate workflows, I have a few here. Um, it uh, kind of does all this work for you that you didn't have to, um, you wouldn't have to do otherwise. Um, an example of this is I, every night I noticed that I would get into the car and I would text my wife and say, um, you know, what's your plan for the night? Um, you know, when are you coming home? And so I created a tiny little set of instructions here that when I run it, creates this text, what's your plan? And then it sends it to my wife. And you'll see a little bit of a, a line in between these two boxes to show that the information is flowing from one kind of box to another. Uh, when I run this, and that's by hitting that play button at the top, I get a text uh, sent to my wife. I mean, I have to hit send, but it does it for me, basically. Um, it's really convenient. Um, and what's great about these apps is that there's an option in the settings to add it to your home screen. So if you look at my home screen in the bottom right, you will see my Ask Liza Plan app, which I can just tap at any time. <clears throat> You'll see it goes into Workflow. Okay, that didn't work. <laughs> I guess it did in the background. <clears throat> goes into workflow and it uh, it should create a text. Let me try that again. Okay, had a little snafu there. That's okay. Um, but anyway, anytime I hit this app, it should. I'm gonna try it again. Should go into workflow and create that. There you go. Um, create that uh, that text with uh, what's your plan. So that's my my first workflow that I created. Um, and then my wife was talking to me about her how at the end of the month she gets frustrated because she has to fill out a an expense report, which many people do, um, because she buys things on her credit card. And then at the end of the month, she goes through and tries to see on her statement what needs to be tracked. So she has to pull out the information and put it on a spreadsheet, and uh, it takes forever. So I looked at the spreadsheet, and I looked at what she needed, and I thought Workflow might be able to do this. What if there was a way, like when she was getting, say, she was getting paying for an Uber, that she could just pull out her phone and run a workflow and get that information in there, like who she bought it from, the price, the date, what card she used, what type of expense it was, all those things that her company wants to know, and just have it automatically add like in the background to a spreadsheet that's like synced on Dropbox or something. So that basically every she does this every time she buys something and at the and it'll take, you know, ten seconds or less. And at the end of the month, when she opens up her spreadsheet, um, that's been syncing on her Dropbox, been collecting on her Dropbox, she's going to see all those uh, expenses organized perfectly for her and her time, uh, the time she spends on those expense reports is going to be dramatically diminished. So here is what I came up with. Um, I create a new workflow and you do have to get the workflow app and you do have to link it to your Dropbox um, so that way you can have the sync happening to make this work. And obviously anything I do here, you can uh, tweak or kind of make your own um, for your own needs. Um, this is when you set up a workflow, you set it up once and then you can run it as many times as you want. Um, so while it may take some time to set up in the beginning, it's totally worth it. First thing you do is you click the gear icon at the top right to give it a name and an icon. I'm going to call this demo. And I'm going to change this icon to something a little bit more uh, appropriate for what we're trying to build. <clears throat> and uh, when you slide to the left, <clears throat> From here, you have a whole bunch of actions that you can drag onto this palette to build your kind of list of tasks or actions or instructions. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to collect some information from her. The very first thing, I don't want her to see a welcome screen, nothing. I want to collect some information. So I'm going to ask for input. That's one of the actions under the scripting, um, the scripting section. So what I do is I hold down on that kind of row and I drag it over here and it expands so I have a little more uh, control over what I'm asking for. I'm asking for the vendor that she's using. And our example is going to be Uber. I'm going to leave everything else as is. The default answer is optional. I don't want to put anything in there. And the input type is just regular text. Not a number, not a link, just regular text. If I run this just like that, the very first thing I get is what is the vendor? And I can change that to, I can type in Uber, let's just say. And then it's going to spit out whatever information it has, because that's the whole workflow, just one question right now. So I typed in Uber. That's the information that it has. It gave me back Uber as a result. Not too interesting. So let's make it more interesting. I'm going to add a, I'm going to take this text that I added and set it to a variable. 
Okay, and you'll see there's a little line linking those boxes, which means that the information in the top box flows into the information in the bottom. And so uh, it's asking me what the vendor is, it gets that information, and it sets that to a variable called vendor. Okay, and so if I run this again, nothing different will happen. It's still going to take my text Uber. It'll ask me for it again, but it'll it'll send it through to that bottom box to set it as a variable. So now any time in the macro that I want to bring up Uber again, um, I just have to bring up this variable vendor. Um, and any time that it's run, whatever you type in as the vendor is going to show up later in the macro. And it's going to remember that's what it is. So let's collect some more information. Let's ask for more input. Um, I'm going to also collect um, what is the cost. And the input type, I'm going to make it number so that it brings up a number pad instead of a keyboard. It's a little easier to work with. Okay, and I'm going to set that to a variable. I'm going to call that variable cost. Okay, so now I have one variable, two variables, and I want one more variable um, before I run it to test it again. I'm going to ask for input. Um, the, the other thing that her spreadsheet needs is the date that she bought it. Okay, so I'm going to... Um, when did you buy it? And I'm going to set this to date. And what it, it also allows a little bit of granularity <clears throat> so that you can make it the date or date time or date and time. And so for this, let's make it the date and time. This makes it a little more um, specific when she puts it in. And I definitely want to put that in a variable, as always. And I'm going to call that um, date. That's my variable. So in review, I have <clears throat> three variables now that I've created um, out of some information that the user is giving to me, like the vendor <clears throat> through text, like the, um, the cost through a number, and uh, the date and time. And that's going to format as date and time. It's really nice. So let's run it and see what happens. I hit play. What is the vendor? What is the price? Uh, it puts in today's date as the default, which is really convenient. And then at the bottom, it's going to spit out. It's going to spit out the very last piece of information it captured. So if you notice, it's capturing the date. That's just because it's the last piece of information that I, it asked for. But it remembers all the other information because I set those to variables, so it doesn't get lost. Um, but nonetheless, that's what we see at the bottom, the date. Notice that the date is formatted with commas. There's December 31st, comma, 2015, comma. That's I'm going to play in a little bit later. <clears throat> um, but for now, another thing I want to ask is what uh, type of expense is it? Because she has different categories for the expenses. Um, and for her to have to type it in every single time, like in a text box, um, would be kind of annoying. So what we do is we create a list of the different cards. There's my list action. This doesn't actually do anything, but we have a list now that we can work with. So I'm going to call this list, uh, I'm going to call the first item on this list travel, and I'm going to call this other one food. Okay, travel and food. And um, when I run this, nothing new will happen. It's just a list. But what I, another action I have here is choose from list. And so now when I put this underneath, um, it connects those two, and it allows me to ask a question. Or ask me to ask what the choice from the list would be. Prompt is uh, uh, what card? Let's see. And if I hit select multiple, that will allow her to select multiple. Oh, what? Sorry, not card. What type? What type of expense? And if I select multiple, it will allow her to to put that under multiple categories. Um, but I'm not going to do that because these are strict categories. So we're just going to keep those as is. Um, and of course, we need a variable. That's important. So we put that variable underneath all that, and we call that variable uh, type. Okay. Um, so now I have a list, and so here's how it runs now. Ask me for the vendor. Puts in the price. Puts in the time. And then it uh, has travel and food. So I'll select food for this uh, thing, even though it was travel, whatever. And of course, remember, it brings back the last thing that was last piece of information, which is type. Um, so now what I want to do is I have to figure out, this is all good, but where does it go? Well, I have these saved in variables, but how do I put it into a spreadsheet like without her having to do anything? So um, there's something called a CSV file, and it's not quite like a spreadsheet, but it, well, it is quite like a spreadsheet, but it's, it's, uh, it's a text file, essentially. And it, I can collect information in this text file 
um, and put commas in between them. And when I open that up in Excel or in Google Sheets, um, it thinks that those commas mean that there's uh, different cells. So I can actually format a spreadsheet um, just by using commas as the separator um, between the different cells. And then when I open it up in Google Apps or open it up in Excel, it's going to show like a spreadsheet. And then I can, I can manipulate it as I would any other spreadsheet. Um, so here's how I do that. I have uh, an action. We'll call it text. And I'm going to um, make this text formatted the way I want my spreadsheet or my CSV file to look. CSV stands for comma separated values. So uh, I want my date to show up first. I want um, a comma in between. I want the vendor next, a comma in between, cost, a comma in between, and then I want the type at the end. Okay. Um, those commas are going to make it when when it creates the CSV file. Those commas are going to create they're going to create different cells. So you're going to see four different cells in a row that uh, have that information in it okay um, and I want to then take that text and append it to a Dropbox file okay and you see those are connected now you can append or prepend I would say for an expense report you should append so it goes at the end instead of the first line and uh, let's do in my notes folder in Dropbox remember my, my Dropbox is connected you have to connect your Dropbox for this to work in my notes folder we're going to call it drop dot txt or actually no we're gonna call it drop dot csv okay so that's my csv file that's where i'm going to collect it so just to be clear you're collecting all the variables above you're putting the variables into a small piece of text with formatting that's going to work for a csv file and then it's adding the that line to a, to a csv file over and over again so at the end of the month uh presumably this t this csv file is going to have everything that you need in it um, all the, the expenses mapped out perfectly okay um, <clears throat> so let's try it out um, if I hit play vendor Uber price date it's for travel and then it appends it and it should spit out at the bottom the full result which looks kind of like a spreadsheet this is a CSV file but those commas uh, had it split up the information into cells now you might notice there's one thing that's kind of weird about this which is that <clears throat> it took the date and the time and split it up and that's because as I pointed out earlier they used commas to separate those values December 31st comma 2015 comma 145 so it thinks that it's three different cells and the same thing for um, this stuff over here but that was what we wanted so it was fine okay so let's go back so how do we fix this um, well you could just deal with it and fix it later um, when you edit your spreadsheet <clears throat> but I like to make things less work so I'm gonna go back up to the date <clears throat> and there's a there's an action over here called replace text and sometimes it crashes your uh, your phone but that's okay We'll go back down to where we collected the date and we're going to do place text and we're going to drag that down and we're going to replace oh i put it in the wrong place i want to put it before the variable is set up well this is the one annoying part of workflow <laughs> is that it sometimes it's annoying um but now it worked okay so i have my date that text is going to flow down here, and it's going to find any commas in that text and replace them with dashes. So that now, <clears throat> that date that was formatted all with commas is going to be formatted now with um, dashes. <clears throat> and then that way it'll show up in one cell in one column. Okay, so let's try that out. If I, uh -oh. if I hit play, puts that in puts in my price my date type <clears throat> and if we're if we did it right yep it shows the date formatted and the time formatted with dashes um, and then it has my vendor my cost and my um, my category 
So um, that file, by the way, it's showing me a preview of it here, but that file actually exists in your Dropbox um, as a, a CSV file. And in that, from that Dropbox, from that drop.csv, you can open it in Excel at the end of the month and your spreadsheet is already done for you. You just have to copy it into whatever template your company uses. So anyway, I hope this was useful. And if you have any questions, feel free to send me a message.